Hey guys, and welcome back to the Acne Channel. My name is Lavinia Rosanda, and today we're going to be taking a little trip down memory lane, and we're going to be looking back at some skincare trends in the past and what we think about them now. Now, as someone with acne, I've had hormonal and cystic acne since I was 13 years old, so it has been seven years that I have been dealing with acne, and let me tell you, 13-year-old me was trying everything. Any product that claimed to, you know, help with acne, I was buying, and there were a lot of mistakes that were made in the past and some trendy products that I would never put on my face today and I think as a whole like society we become more educated when it comes to skincare so I'm very excited to get into this I also want to just point out my makeup today we are rocking that acne positivity I decided to do glam makeup but without any acne coverage so yeah repping that acne positivity but let's get right on into this <music> First up, the Peach Scrub from St. Ives. Oh, I just get like chills when I even think about this product. I actually reacted to one of my skincare routines that I did five or six years ago, where I used this scrub like on a daily basis every single night because it said that it would help with acne since it had salicylic acid in it, but it was like this peach scrub that was literally sandpaper to your face. And I was putting this on my blemishes, you know, scraping at my acne and wondering why my acne was was getting worse so this is definitely something that i'm happy we don't use as much hopefully if you're still using this today there are so many better exfoliating options out there that's why i personally love more chemical exfoliants to help with the skin especially if you're more acne prone like the pumpkin enzyme mask from banish this is what you need if you're looking for an exfoliator we have glycolic acid in here which is going to lightly exfoliate the skin you can use this just once a week nothing too crazy and that will be good enough no need to rub peach on your face i'm not really a fan of the physical exfoliators in general but that one uh-uh moving on we have the biore nose strips now these i actually never tried for myself and i'm kind of happy i didn't because honestly uh, my nose probably thanks me right now but basically if you don't know what this is it's like a sticker basically that you would put on your nose and when you peel it off it would peel off like all your blackheads but on the nose we also have sebaceous filaments which is just natural oil that's produced by the skin if you've ever seen one of those videos of people just squeezing on their nose these are the sebaceous filaments that will come out these nose strips are basically ripping off the top layer of the skin along with you know any gunk or hairs that's on the nose so this will only be a temporary fix plus it can be a lot more damaging than be good so not only can it damage your skin barrier because you're literally ripping your skin off it's also just a temporary fix if nothing Thing goes bad so i would way more you know suggest to someone to use a chemical exfoliant like that glycolic acid one that i showed you or a bha would be great to use in this situation anything with salicylic acid can go deep into the pores and like really exfoliate any gunk out and this will lead to a more permanent solution for those blackheads and sebaceous filaments basically like duct tape for your face like literally these are what they are not good would not recommend next up the thyers witch hazel oh my goodness i actually did use this one i even did a video on it back in the day and i would never put this on my face now especially because i had acne prone skin and i didn't really know my skin type that well so anything that claimed to help with acne or reduce oils i was just putting it all on my face i was guilty of using like hydrogen peroxide on my face too straight up essential oils it was just not a good situation but that's what happens when you're 13 and have no idea what's going on with your skin so this thyers toner it's not terrible i just don't love it because witch hazel can be very stripping to the skin and i have very dry and sensitive skin even though i'm acne prone so what i was doing with this product was i was just stripping my skin completely of any oils and my skin was already dry and sensitive and this would just trigger my acne prone skin even more as it had nothing to help it heal because i was just stripping the skin completely so i probably definitely ruined my moisture barrier back in the day when i was using this so I'm very happy I do not use it anymore. Next up, I already kind of teased it earlier, but straight up essential oils. Yeah. I cannot believe that I used to put just like straight up tea tree oil on my face because I read on some website that it helps with acne. And tea tree oil, yes, is an amazing ingredient for acne prone skin. But when formulated by a chemist to make sure that the, you know, concentration isn't too harsh for your skin. But I was like burning my skin off with these essential oils because some blog on the internet told me it would be good for me. So definitely be careful. I would say with this whole like natural beauty concept, I would also make like a bunch of DIY like at home face masks, which just were like lemon 
and honey and all these things and yes these like natural ingredients do have some benefits but it's way better to use a product that's especially formulated for your skin for the skin's ph levels and all of that rather than taking some risks with some products just because they're natural and next up my bff when i was 13 the aztec clay mask this stuff was everywhere like i remember when i first saw it in a store and i picked it up right away it was just like huge and basically people would use this on their face they would use it in their hair and it was like a secret mask basically that was supposed to help with acne looking more into it it's a clay mask and clay does absorb oil so i guess for oily prone skin it could kind of help by reducing that overproduction of oil to help with the acne but again Again, for me, I had very dry and sensitive skin, but I did not know it. I just thought I had acne prone skin and therefore I needed to suck every single oil off my face. So I would use this mask all the time. And when I didn't put it on my whole face, I applied it as a spot treatment. I probably use this like four to five times a week, just completely drying out and stripping my skin. And get this. I never used a moisturizer because I thought that moisturizer would make my skin more oily and cause more acne. So definitely, you know, we've learned things throughout the years. So that one I don't hate as a product. I think it's a good product actually, but do I think there's better stuff out there for acne prone skin? Yes. Clarisonic or spin brushes in general. You've probably used one of these. You've probably seen like if you had like an older sister or your mom use one of these. They were very, very popular. Everyone was using them. And this kind of goes back to that kind of physical exfoliation we were talking about because if you think about a spin brush, it's still a physical exfoliator. You have those bristles that are spinning and you're also probably like applying pressure while using them. So it's gonna exfoliate that top layer of the skin. Now imagine at the time we were using the peach scrub, the thyres, witch hazel the aztec mask and using this spin brush so our skin was probably so stripped and yeah i'm guilty of that too i used to love these spin brushes because i was like i really want to get in there and make sure my skin is fully cleansed and get really like in there with the product but really i feel like it was just pushing product around my face and especially i wouldn't wash the brush all the time as you should so i bet like it was just kind of spreading bacteria all over my face and over exfoliating my skin too today i would not recommend a spin brush to someone i'm okay with those silicone face washers that you can clean very easily because those they don't have that much physical exfoliation to them because they're not bristles but if you like that kind of sensorial um, experience of cleansing your skin I'd recommend one of those other than a spin brush any day. And something I think a lot of us had a hard time parting with um, after being told they're awful for our skin are the Neutrogena face wipes, makeup wipes, or just makeup wipes in general. I am personally not a fan of makeup wipes. Um, when I was younger, I would use makeup wipes and I would also use baby wipes because I thought that they would be better for my skin. But at the end of the day, they're a rough wipe that's also gonna do some of that physical exfoliating as you're rubbing it on. And simply, a makeup wipe cannot cleanse your skin like a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm could ever do so i highly recommend if you're still using makeup wipes if you're still using these very popular neutrogena makeup wipes switch over to a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil numbazin makes a great one juno skin makes a great one even milani the inky list like there's so many better options out there and ever since switching to a double cleansing routine where i use a cleansing oil or cleansing balm before my water cleanser i can always make sure like 100 percent that all the makeup is off my skin completely and these have beneficial properties to your skin too because they can add back that hydration and can be really good for like dry and sensitive skin so definitely get rid of the makeup wipes especially if you have acne you're just rubbing that wipe all over your acne and irritating it so do not recommend i feel like i'm getting like heated over these products because i'm like there's just like in the back of my mind i'm like i used all of these and they ruined my skin so i just want to like I'm very passionate about this video today. Next up, we have the Mario Badescu facial sprays. These were like the product every it girl had, you know? Every makeup guru was using these. I even used them um, and I was obsessed. I'm like these, you know, like you'd apply them and you'd smell like rose or avocado or green tea and you would just feel like your skin is looking glowy. But honestly, not the biggest fan of these now. I know that my skin has a sensitivity to fragrance, so I am biased in that aspect because I don't like using products with fragrance in them because oftentimes they just irritate my skin and I definitely think that these were irritating my skin because it's like it's literally just fragrance in a spray bottle but even if you don't have sensitive skin there's nothing really beneficial to these at all they're literally as I said a fragrance in a bottle there are other sprays I would actually recommend
one that could have benefits to your skin but also refresh you because I will say a spray is nice it can be a very like nice relaxing refreshing part of a skincare or makeup routine but those were just not it for me I would way rather use something like this from bubble this is the bounce back refreshing toner it's a spray this has willow bark extract in here, so it'll actually help with acne. I also love something like this from Milani. This is the Cannabis Sativa Seed Oil, so it's very hydrating to the skin. So it actually is like skincare, but also a facial spray at the same time. Way rather use something like this than those Mario Badescu sprays. And I left a good one for last, guys. Pour vacuums. Dun, dun, dun! These are literally like probably the most damaging thing that you could put on your face. And I'm guilty of using them too. I did reviews on some of these pore vacuums, you know, back um, in the day on my YouTube channel. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is so cool sucking all this gunk out of my pores and everything, especially because they came out with pore vacuums that had cameras inside of them. So you could actually see your skin really up close, but at the end of the day, again, what you're doing is damaging the skin because you're using a suction on it. And especially in this nose area where it's cartilage, this could actually lead to broken capillaries in the nose because you are sucking on it. And especially if you aren't using it correctly. I mean, you shouldn't be using this at all, but if you're holding on one spot for too long, this could be very, very damaging. Plus, definitely not a permanent solution to blockheads. You should just be using like a salicylic acid or a BHA to exploit rather than a pore vacuum. So hopefully you are not using a pore vacuum on your skin. All right, so that is all the products that I wanted to talk about today. What do you guys think about some of these past skincare trends? What do you think about them now? Did you make some of these mistakes using them when you were, you know, maybe a teen struggling with acne? I'm very curious. So leave everything down below in the comments, but I hope you're having a fantastic day or night whenever you're watching. Make sure to subscribe to the acne channel and also like this video if you enjoyed. And you can also go check me out on my YouTube channel at Lavinia Rosanda. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.